Hey Ashley, it's Sarah with Artisan Indie and Flourish at Artisan Indie. And I am critiquing your Etsy shop today. Super excited to, to kind of go over everything. I like to first start with branding. Um, I think branding is so important because once your branding is like put in place and it is uh, attracting in those that uh, would be most likely to buy from you, um, that's a good starting point, right? It's kind of like, um, you know, you have branding set up so that it kind of does a lot of the work for you. So you shouldn't have to explain too much what you do. You shouldn't have to, um, uh, you know, sell people uh, on the street by, you know, pulling them into your shop. Your branding should do that for you, right? So you have Faith and Grace Boutique is your business name. Faith and Grace Boutique, okay? So automatically that makes somebody feel like they may be able to find some kind of inspirational items in, in your shop. Um, they probably can know that, um, that your shop is probably uh, Christian uh, ran and owned, right? So that right there definitely... Uh, uh, sends out a message. So you're going to attract those customers who um, look uh, up to that in a business. And um, those that don't, you know, you may not be so interested in going into your shop. So, and that's okay. That's the nice thing about branding is that you have your brand is kind of your business's morals, right? Or your business's. Um, description if you will kind of like what your business stands for so your branding has to represent that right so you have faith and grace boutique and then you have a tagline that says handmade children's clothing t-shirts for both adult and children and girls hair accessories now that's kind of lit that lists out what you do um, you may want to find a tagline that's a little shorter and uh, something that maybe sounds a little uh, snappy, if you will, <laughs> catchy, uh, and then leave this, the Handmaid's Children's Clothing T-shirts for both adult and children, girls' hair accessories, down here, and I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, I really like the flowers that you're using. They're beautiful. They uh, look almost like watercolors. Um, they definitely have a soft feel to them. And they do kind of have a boutique kind of vibe. So I do like that uh, as far as a logo or as, as, as a graphic that you're using within your branding. However, I, I, I don't think you need three of them, meaning one here, one here, and one here. And I'm not too fond of the color, this green, which looks like a golf green or a, gra you know, a, gr a grass kind of green uh with the flowers it doesn't accent it very well uh and also uh, again because of this being so long it doesn't look very centered or balanced so i real quick want to run to a couple of my favorite uh flourisher shops just to kind of give you an idea of their branding so first and this is to show you kind of an example of what uh, a solid branding can look like in an Etsy shop because once you get branded you want then that to kind of all be consistent with everything throughout your page your photos and the colors that you use and the words that you use and things like that so this looks very elementary and please know anytime I say anything and, and that might sound constructive <laughs> it is constructive I'm not trying to be mean in any way this is really to help you um, and I know I only have a short amount of time to kind of go over it, so I want to make sure that I'm getting to the point. So please don't take anything I say personally because I would never mean anything mean at all um, by it. So I'm going to go to Olola and Co., which is Tyler's shop. Now Tyler, uh, Tyler Justine, she is a flourisher, and she does things with vinyl, right? So she does shirts and mugs and accessories and things like that uh, personalized. She has found that her niche is brides or bride to, brides-to-be. 
people getting married, people having a bridal shower, a bachelorette party, uh, maybe people planning special events. So she has branded herself around catering to this, this group of people. And, and, and obviously, like, if I were to just cover, let's say that I was to cover this line, and I was just to show you this part, which has her, you know, graphics of it looks like a, a bouquet or flowers and her beautiful name and font here. Without even telling you what she does, you would already kind of have an idea. I'm sure you would guess it has something to do with weddings or special events or maybe even uh, uh, a flower shop or something like that. So that feeling that the banner gives the initial customer being in your shop makes a huge difference because if I'm getting married and I were to see that, I'd be like, ooh, look at her shop. I want to see what she makes. You know what I mean? Um, it gives me all the right feelings. And then she she ties it into her shop icon here. So she, she takes the same fonts. She has the same colors and she kind of puts it here. So it all flows really well. And then of course her picture here and then here's some of her uh, the items that that she sells now she's still working on her her product photography but as far as branding it really is looking good let me show you another shabby cottage adorned this is Gail's shop Gail Schmidt she's also in flourish um, she's worked really hard on her branding and I think she's done an amazing job again she has her her name shabby cottage adorned Here's her tagline because beauty is in the details. Again, that doesn't really tell tell the viewer what is in there, but this this imagery, this graphic, these colors, these fonts, they're going to attract a certain person. And that person may not even know what's in the what's in the shop, but they're going to come in because of the feeling the branding gave them. So she, so look at these colors and then she has her flowers here. She ties it in, down into her icon here. And if you look within her shop, she uses a lot of the same colors in her branding in her product photography. Do you see that? So it's very consistent. You, you can imagine that if she were to have a physical store, it would be perhaps this little shabby cottage, um, maybe off the side, you know, uh, side um, of the road, maybe in a uh, coastal area or maybe even in a cabin somewhere, but something really kind of Victorian feeling or romantic feeling uh, or shabby. Okay, so that kind of gives you an example of uh, what some good branding really looks like. Okay, and then we come back here. So I would perhaps maybe similar to uh, Gail's maybe have a bigger flower, maybe right here and then here. I would have this uh, a little larger and I would definitely change your tagline out. Um, and I would change this color. So maybe have a soft blue uh, or a soft teal blue maybe. Uh, I think that would be nice and it would definitely uh, go better with your flower design. Now here is where you can put all of this stuff. Well, I don't know if it all fits, if it will all fit, sorry, but um, definitely a lot of it could fit. Uh, this is where you wanna put a lot of keywords in this line because this will help you with the Google search algorithm. So it doesn't really matter as far as Etsy goes, but um, if someone were to search for some of these things on Google, um, this is kind of one of the most important spaces that they look to to determine where to rank you. So for, well, for any Etsy shop, really. So you want to make sure you utilize this line really well. Great picture of you here. Beautiful smile. So you're welcoming people into your shop, which is really nice. These are your featured items. You want to ensure that they are uh, seasonally appropriate, which it looks like they are. You got Halloween, Halloween, and Thanksgiving. So awesome job there. Uh, this space right here, I want you to utilize this to di direct your customers, your viewers to your website, if you have a website or a blog, um, anywhere where you're taking it and trying to get uh, an email list built. That's what I would recommend you put here, have a simple call to action like, 
join our VIP list and receive 10% off your next purchase or something like that to that effect. And then www and your website. Now, if you don't have a website, I highly recommend that at least you buy your URL and uh, get a landing page built, which is just one page and start collecting email addresses. It's so important for you to start doing that. Even if you go to in-person vendor fairs, you can still collect emails in person. So um, do that because then that's that's like gold to you. It's, it's the group of people that you can market to um, no matter what the Etsy algorithm is doing. So it kind of gives you more control in your business. All right, you have 45 items. I would try to get that up a little bit more if you can. Um, I like to see really, you know, right around 100-ish items. That's kind of good. Although you don't have to have that many, but I would definitely try to be between 50 and 100. Um, anything under 50, I think that, that customers don't take those shops as serious as those that have maybe more items. Although those that have 300 and 400 and 500 items, they also, that, that kind of takes away the handmade charm. So I would, you know, I try to tell my clients between 100 and 200 is, is a great number to be at, but I'm perfectly fine with, with uh, those that have 50, 58, 65, you know, whatever items in there. That still is a decent amount and it allows you to also still have that, you know, this is handmade uh, feeling within your shop. Um, let's see. So you have these organized really well. It looks like you added Christmas and maybe forgot to organize that. So I would put Christmas, uh, you know, where it, where it fits in. Uh, if you want it to be at the end, maybe Christmas shirts, uh, Christmas slash holiday shirts, what, whatever it is, uh, you, you do want that to be organized like you have it here, which is great. We're going to skip over your shop. Go down to your about page. All right, excellent picture, fantastic. All right, so you have three pictures in here. You're allowed five, so I would try to find uh, two more, but this is great. This is what you wanna show. You want people to know that you are a, a home business that makes things by hand, and you're showing here your sewing machine, your, your fabric, um, you're showing you actually putting on your designs. I mean, this is fantastic. Your husband and your baby. I mean, beautiful photo here. So you can put more photos uh, of you and your family or of you and your work. Um, or even you could upload a video and, and that also will add more value to your products. But it's the, the, the thing you want to focus on in this section is that people get to know you and they get to kind of uh, start to, to think of you not just as Faith and Grace Boutique, but Ash, you know, Ashley from Faith and Grace. And that's what you want to build up there. Uh, you know, also it kind of gives, when people buy your products, you're now giving them a story, believe it or not. Now when they give their gift, it isn't, oh, I picked this up at this, you know, I saw it at the store the other day and it was so cute. No, it's like, oh my gosh, this, you know, um, clothing designer or this um, uh, handmade artist, she uh, made this for you. And uh, she's so awesome. Her name's Ashley. She has, you know, beautiful children and a husband. She works from her dining room, dining room in her home. And, it, and they're going to, when they get that and they hear the story, they get, they, 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 they treasure the product a little bit more. It doesn't become so disposable that so it means more, not just to the people buying it, but also to the people getting it as a gift. Um, and the same goes if, if somebody's buying it for themselves or their children, they're apt to treat it better than they would something they bought from Target. You have Facebook and Instagram. I highly recommend you put Pinterest here. If you don't have a business Pinterest, I'd get on it. Uh, Pinterest is great for weddings and babies. Uh, it looks like yours is more children, but still, you know, moms are, they hang out on, on Pinterest all the time. So I would say that building up a, a business Pinterest would be great. Since you're in Flourish, you, uh, I would recommend you look at Rebecca Bradley's trainings from Pinrite, um, because she is amazing with Pinterest and she can really help you, uh, get going on that platform. 
All right, let's talk about your pictures. So, well, let's first talk about your pricing. Your pricing looks good. You're using the 95 cent price point, which is what I recommend for boutique type shops. Your price increments look good to me. I'd say that you have a little bit of room to raise your prices, but you may want to uh, wait on that until you get uh, maybe some different uh, product shots in here. Your photography needs work. It definitely needs work. You got a whole lot going on. I mean, here we have a white background. Here we have an oriental rug, a fence, uh, the grass, fence. I'm not sure what this is. Maybe vinyl, bushes. Uh, so we got a lot going on, right? And it doesn't really make sense with your branding either. So what I would do, if let's say, for example, you're going to keep this right here. Go to Ink and Elm, which is one of my favorite shops on Etsy. They offer a Flourish discount as well. You can look in the Flourish swag section. And these, what they make is vinyl backdrops in all different sizes, okay? So like this is four foot by three foot. This is seven foot by six foot. You know, determine the size that you that you're gonna need. If you're just doing flat lays, um, you won't need such a big big backdrop. If you're gonna actually shoot modeled photography, you may need a bigger one. So what I want you to look for is something that will go with your brand, but also will uh, complement your items. So a lot of your items are black and white but you have those soft colors so something like this wouldn't be so bad um, maybe a little lighter though now i'm not all about you having to have white backgrounds i'm not a big fan of the white background to be honest but you do want light and bright so you want to think about your target market you want to think about your brand and your branding and then you want to make a decision on what would be a good background so this which looks very similar to what you're using now i'm curious if this is it while it's cute and very rustic, this would be great to display cabin decor, right? This would be great to display maybe a, a, a lake sign or a porch rule sign, right? Um, maybe even a pair of boots or a leather wallet. This isn't exactly what I see with your branding. So I see something more like this, something soft and muted. Remember, if you're gonna use those flowers as part of your branding, you wanna continue with that throughout your photos. So that's what I mean when I say your branding really, it's the foundation that your business is built on and it is it should be going through everything. So for example, if you had a physical shop and let's say that you had a brick storefront in an urban part of a city um, and you had, let's say, neon lights as your sign, when you walked in, you wouldn't expect to have uh, lace and um, plush displays and soft music, right? That wouldn't make sense. So you want to be, you know, you'd probably have rock music and bright, bold neon colors and, and things like that. So you want to make sure that your outside of your shop matches the inside of your shop, right? So the outside of your shop on e-commerce is more like your banner, your logos, your fonts, the words that you use, your pictures. Um, whereas the inside of your shop is more like your product listing photos or your product copies, um, any packaging, things like that. So you want it to all flow together. I love this. This is one of my favorite um, backgrounds on Ink and Elm. Um, I like it because the lines are not real visible. I, I'm not a big fan of these lines because one, if you do a flat lay and you have the lines the opposite of each other, like up and down versus this way, it looks terrible. Or if this is slightly turned to the right, you'll have a little bit of a diagonal. Or let's say you just put the item not in the same spot that you put it on it before, and then it creates all this busyness in the background of pictures. So I wouldn't use anything like that. I would do something that's softer like this. This is nice, but doesn't really go with your branding. Uh, let's see. That pink is pretty. I really love this. It's so perfect for so many different sellers. <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
This is too dark, obviously. Too busy. This isn't bad here, back here in the backdrop. You just want to make sure that you have really good lighting. And, but, I mean, it could be colorful. I mean, you can have some color on there. You just don't want it to um, distract from your item. You don't want it to compete with your item. Uh, you want it to kind of just be in the background. This is, this is pretty, too. I don't think that would go with your white and black as much, though. So go through there and see if there's anything that you like that you can use that better describes your brand, okay, than the darker wood. Uh, let's go ahead and look at your SEO. We got Thanksgiving shirt for girls, fall shirt for toddlers, girls Thanksgiving outfit, Thanksgiving shirt, holiday shirt, shirt for girls. Um, I love it. I think I mean these are all great keywords. You're you're you are copying a lot, so I may put, you know throw some autumn words in there. Um, um, let's see. Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thanksgiving long sleeve shirt. That's a good one. That's a good long tail keyword. It's being searched on Etsy. Um, that would be a good one to use. Um, let's see. Girls long sleeve shirt. Another good one. Let's try I'm with pie. I'm with a pie. Nope. I wouldn't have school pictures in that because of the writing. Okay, so you just want to make sure, and did you see what I was doing here in the Etsy search bar? That kind of shows what, as, like, you can just simply click here, and it's telling you what people are searching for right now, okay? So that's kind of cool because that kind of lets you know what's trending. But simply typing things into the bar, you'll see it brings up Thanksgiving shirt. You know, you'll see... Uh, what keywords are coming up. It just tells you that these are, you know, popular search terms right now. So that's always good. Um, you should be checking your, your keywords often, I would say, about once every couple of months, just to make sure that your words you're using are still trending. And if they're not, is it because it's out of season or is it because there's um, a new better phrase that you could use? But for the most part, this looks good. It's formatted properly. I like it. You want to make sure you're also then pasting those words down here, which it looks like you're doing. Um, let's look at your copy. Is this it? This sure is perfect. It looks nice. So that's good. You really want to have a little bit more copy than this. Now, and I know that it'll say more here, but I would do some interlinking. Like, you know, thanks so much for stopping by my shop. If you'd like to see our other holiday shirts, click here and have them click into uh, share the link to the category uh, link in your shop that has the holiday shirts, let's say. Okay, so when you do that, that does help strengthen your SEO with that interlinking. I don't really think SEO is your issue. I really think that your photos and your branding are your pain points. Your pricing looks good, your SEO looks good, your copy, although it's very short, um, it actually looks good as well. I would focus on branding. I would do that first because it's it's you can do it quickly. Um, I highly recommend you reaching out to a graphic designer. Of course, I'm going to recommend the Flourish graphic designers because they're amazing and affordable. Um, but ev even if you know somebody, let's say you want to do it yourself, you can use Canva. It's not probably going to be as nice as a graphic designer doing it, but it is uh, somewhat free. Uh, so you may look at that, that's canva.com. Uh, so I would do that first. Then I would absolutely work on your photos. Uh, flat lays, again, are fine if you have a background that's light, doesn't compete, it's not distracting, and makes sense with your brand uh, and your branding. Um, I also would get some modeled shots in there. 
Um, these shots are cute. You obviously, I mean, these adorable little girl, um, but the background isn't so great. So I would maybe even reach out to a couple product photographers, find out, say, hey, you know, what do you charge for like two or three or four items? Um, it's not very much, believe it or not. Send them out and get your items photographed um, professionally. Uh, professionally modeled uh, with a with a good camera it can make all the difference in the world let me show you um, show you Stacy and Jessica's shop these are also Flour Flourish members now their target market is more urban it's more um, modern uh, trendy if you will so they're using, you know, more grunge look and feel like the, the kind of cement, um, concrete brick background. Super cute. Look at their, their cute little kids. So they have their stuff just on a white background, which is, again is not my favorite, but it works. Okay. So, um, but, but what they have is they have the modeled shots kind of sprinkled in within those. So it gives you this really good, like you can see what these are, but you kind of are imagining them on your child, right? Or the the gift giver, uh, um, the the gift giver is imagining the the child that it's going to be given to, what it will look like, what he or she will look like in there. So um, again, I think you really need to pay attention, make sure that your your brand is uh, on point with your mission, basically, from uh, of your business. Your branding is all consistent with that, and it flows down into your photos. Uh, and then I think you will really do really well. I mean, you have really cute designs, super cute shirts uh, and, and outfits. You just need to have some consistency where it all kind of flows and pulls together. So I hope this helps. Um, oh, my goodness. Uh, I know it's been forever in getting it to you. I apologize for the delay. Uh, but if you have any questions, please know you can reply to me on Etsy here in a convo. Or, of course, you can send me a message on Facebook because you are a Flourish member. Thanks so much, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.